Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. It's Friday. Good morning. So good to have you with us here on WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. It is September 18th. And our time right now is 631. Governor Steve Beshear has ordered flags fly at half staff today in honor of a murdered Kentucky State Police trooper. New details about why state police say several officers were forced to shoot a man last night in Rockcastle County. And a woman is suing an eastern Kentucky store after she says she was locked up inside. And we are off and running on this final Friday of summer. Temperatures are starting off in the mid and upper 50s. Very seasonable as we go rolling into fall. Tracking some showers and storms to our north. That's part of another system that will likely impact us as we head into the weekend. You got a chance of rain tomorrow with a high around 82. Much cooler on Sunday. I'll break it all down hour by hour. Coming up. And leading our news on WKYT this morning, hundreds are expected to come out today and remember a murdered Kentucky State Police trooper. Trooper Cameron Ponder was shot and killed in the line of duty Sunday night in Lyon County. WKYT's Mark Barber is live at KSB headquarters in Frankfurt with details on today's funeral procession. Good morning, Rebecca. This will be a very difficult day for many as State Trooper Joseph Ponder is given a final hero's farewell. This morning, flags here at the State Police Headquarters in Frankfurt and around the state are flying at half staff to honor the fallen trooper. His funeral will begin at 11 a.m. at the Severns Valley Baptist Church in Elizabethtown. After that, a motorcade procession will leave from the church at noon. From there, the procession will go through Radcliffe and end at the Kentucky Veterans Cemetery in Fort Knox. Now, this is where you can play a part. State police want to see people lining the streets around this motorcade. Of course, it will cause a traffic impact as roads will be temporarily closed, but troopers are hoping that people will be patient and will take the time to stop and remember Joseph Ponder. Now, many of us know this story by now. The trooper was shot to death during a traffic stop in Hardin County on Sunday. According to state police, he clocked a 25-year-old Missouri man driving more than 100 miles per hour. Rather than arrest the man, Joseph Johnson Shanks, troopers tell us that Ponder tried to help him get a hotel room. Instead, the 25-year-old sped off again, and the next time he stopped, state police say he leaned out his window and gunned the trooper down. Ponder was a Navy veteran and engaged. Now, we have already seen crowds of people honoring the fallen trooper throughout this past week, and many more are expected to continue to do so today. Now, I've spoken with several state police officers during this time, and they say that the support that's been pouring in from people who are taking the time to remember this fallen trooper, that's what's keeping them going through this very difficult time. Live in Frankfurt, I'm Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, thanks so much, Mark. Funeral services for a Lexington airman killed in Afghanistan will be held today as well. 27 year old Matthew Rowland died August 26th. Flags will fly at half staff throughout the state today in his honor. Rowland will be buried this morning at Arlington National Cemetery near Washington, D.C. Our time is 6.34 on WKYT this morning. We have some new details just coming in this morning about a deadly shootout with police in Rockcastle County. WKYT was the first station to report the news last night on our 11 o'clock broadcast. The shooting happened on Doug Hill Road in Broadhead. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain is at our live desk with this new information we have. Michelle, good morning. Good morning, Bill. According to police, one man is dead after he fired shots at police officers last night in Rockcastle County. Kentucky State Police is investigating after officers were called out to a home last night for a domestic situation. That's when the situation turned deadly. KSP said it had a vehicle enforcement officer arrive to the home along with a KSP trooper and the Rockcastle County Sheriff's deputy. When they arrived to the home on Doug Hill Road off of US 150 in Broadhead, police say suspect Lawrence Price came out of the home waving a handgun at officers. Police say Price pointed a gun at officers and fired. They also say shots were exchanged between Price and all three officers. The officers involved were not injured, but Price was hit and later died. Our investigation so far has revealed that he brandished a firearm in the direction of the officers and fired his weapon in the direction of the officers. Police say the other person in the home was not injured, and the officers were not injured as well, and their names have not been released. The shooting remains under investigation. Keep checking WKYT.com for updates. 
At the live desk, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. All right, Michelle, thank you very much. We're tracking two crime alerts this morning in Lexington after a pair of gas station robberies happened overnight. The latest about 3.30 this morning at the Speedway at Liberty and Old Todd's Road. Police say a man and woman pushed the clerk down and stole cigarettes. The couple then took off in a red Mitsubishi in that situation. And just before 1 o'clock this morning, police say a man had a gun when he robbed the Shell gas station at New Circle at Russell Cave. No arrests have been made in either robbery. Lexington police are also looking for the driver who caused an overnight crash. Two cars crashed at North Broadway and West 6th Street around 2 this morning. One woman was treated at the scene. A family of nine is without a home this morning after a fire in Anderson County. The Anderson News shared some photos of the fire that destroyed the home on Alton Station Road last night. Firefighters say the man who owned the home went to the hospital for smoke inhalation. According to the paper, firefighters had to perform mouth to snout, that's what it's called, resuscitation to help a dog that was stuck in the home. This morning, there's still no word on exactly what caused the fire. This morning, crews are searching for a man with ties to Lexington who was lost in South America. Enrique Rodriguez is a geophysicist. He went to Henry Clay and studied at UK. Rodriguez's family says he was working in a Bolivian jungle, and they haven't heard from him in more than two weeks. His father has gone to Bolivia to help with the search. Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis has lost another bid to delay licensing same-sex marriages. Her appeal was rejected on the same day that her husband and dozens of others attended a religious rally in Nashville. Davis returned to work this week after spending days in jail for defying a federal court order. She continues to refuse to issue licenses after the Supreme Court legalized gay marriage. The decision-making board at the Central Kentucky High School will now consider if and how it will change a controversial dress code policy. A committee at Woodford County High School met last night and decided to send four different proposals to the site-based decision-making council. The dress code came under fire after a mother shared a photo of her daughter's outfit earlier this summer that the school said violated their policy. We're told the council could make a decision as early as Monday. Well, a woman says that she is humiliated and embarrassed out in eastern Kentucky. A Floyd County customer is suing a store after she says she got trapped inside. Sophia Bentley says employees at the Dollar Tree in Prestonsburg turned out the lights and closed up the store with Hill still inside, the, with her still inside that store. She says she suffers from panic attacks, and she said being in the store alone and in the dark caused her emotional distress. I was locked up and couldn't do nothing about it. It was like somebody threw me in a jail and just left me and forgot me. The lawsuit says that police were able to help Bentley get out of the store after about an hour. Well, the moist alcohol sales vote in Middlesboro looks to become official today. The Board of Elections Commission will review the votes today. The decision to sell, sell alcohol by the drink in restaurants was separated by just 119 votes. Once the numbers are certified, there will be a 60-day period before alcohol can be served at restaurants there in town. And a vote coming up uh, Tuesday, a week from Tuesday in Berea on that uh, same issue, by the way. All right, 639 is the time this morning, and we're going to check live drive traffic to see what's happening. Yeah, I believe we have Officer Don with us now with a look. Hey, Don, good morning. Hey, good morning. Just had a look at the interstate. I'll adjust the microphone. Here. Just had a look at the interstate and 75. Still looks great. No problems this morning uh, between the northern and southern splits. Also watching the north side of Lexington on the inner and outer loops approaching Russell Cave. And a stalled car over there. It's blocking the left lane on the outer loop, uh, but traffic's moving past that. Let's get a live look outside right now. University Drive. Things picking up around campus. A lot of pedestrians out, so keep that in mind. Be careful on your way in. As far as our drive times go and our ways map, overall view of the city shows that things on the circle are normal uh, for this time of the morning. Nicholasville Road from Jessamine County, always keep a close eye there. That looks pretty good. So does Harrodsburg Road and Versailles Road. We'll keep you up to date. Now back to you. All right, probably have some uh, early tailgaters arriving about uh, any yeah. time <laughs> over there. Real early. A lot of will camp out uh, probably tonight, getting ready for the big game tomorrow. 6:40 is the time on WKYT this morning. Good morning to you. We're so glad you're along with us. Looking for love just got a little bit easier. How your love of bacon can help find that perfect someone after weather. And a forecast looks lovely today with daytime highs likely running in the 80s. A lot of sunshine and then showers and storms come rolling into the area for tomorrow and that important UK game. I'll have the latest coming up.